Hello and welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm gonna talk about the enemies in Elden Ring. This video will cover the enemies and bosses that are encountered in Whipping Peninsula, the early game area. Elden Ring has a lot of different enemy types throughout the whole game and there are also enemies that reappear in other areas in this gigantic map, but today we'll cover all the enemies in Whipping Peninsula only, talk about their attack pattern, appearances and characteristics. After passing the Bridge of Sacrifices, you start your journey in Whipping Peninsula. The area is not much small and this area has a lot of different enemy types. Whipping Peninsula is a great start because here you basically understand what type of enemies you can face in future in later areas. Starting off in Whipping Peninsula, you encounter a Godric soldier. The one here uses a generic sword with a brass shield and dies pretty easily. The other variants are not seen here. These dogs are called Rotten Stray, it's one type of feral dog and their appearances are pretty detailed. They'll immediately start attacking when they notice you and they are fast. A good way to deal with them is using a shield so when the jumps are due to bite you can block it and then hit them for a kill. A troll sleeps in this area, you can lock onto three of his body parts. He can do swipe attacks, stomp attacks, hand slams and after half of his HPs are gone, he uses his massive sword which he slams with it or does a full combo associated with his regular slam attacks. The troll also does a roar attack that hits the player if he is at a distance, often when fleeing away from it. Just a little ahead, some misbegottens are chopping the bodies of some Godric soldiers. These humanoid creatures have small wings that they use to get up in the air and do a leg stomp and their weapon is a cleaver. There's also a flying variant of this creature that flies and shoots arrows from up. It can be seen in Castle Morn. A jump attack is necessary to kill it. Misbegotten's superior form is Leonin Misbegotten who is a boss at the end of Castle Morn. This one is more aggressive than regular Misbegotten. Wombo combos are his favorite thing to do and often he likes to make his eyes glowing red following up with a roar. He can close his distance from far to launch at you but he gets staggered pretty easily by a block which makes it a boss fight quite easy to tackle. It can one shot players who only plays the game for lures though. Miranda flowers grow near caves and they emit clouds of poison. Poison status effect builds up pretty quickly if you're exposed to it. The giant Miranda flowers emit more poison and has these pillars of light falling like rain which can kill you pretty easily. It has more health and it is also a boss in one of the caves in Whipping Peninsula. Bats can be seen almost everywhere throughout the whole game. They mostly launch at you with their claw to deal damage and they also bite you following audio visual cue which builds up the bleed status on the character. Needless to say, their glowing eyes assures that this is an actual bat. There's a knight's cavalry which spawns in Whipping Peninsula at night. This knight rider is an optional boss that has a dark horse and he wields a flail. His weapon inflicts bleed on your character. The horse also have some movesets which our horse torrent don't have sadly. The horse and the rider both have their own hitboxes and when you kill the horse, the cavalry falls down on the ground, attacks you with a little bit before summoning his horse again. When he is unmounted you can deal a lot of damage to him. If you use your own steed to fight him, the battle comes into your favor. Overall for the new players, Night Rider is a tough encounter. Deathbird is another miniboss that appears at night. This boss looks like the bones that are left after you're done eating KFC. It uses a cane-like weapon and it's quite fast with it too. It also uses its beak to poke your head a little. It has some slam attacks that can catch you off guard. Quite a challenging boss fight, especially pretty overwhelming in the early game. I've also noticed a scream of the dead bird that builds up the dead blight status on the character. I think the wings of the bird is quite identical to the wings of the misbegottens. These poison enemies inside this cave can cast poison with their staff. Their staff inflict poison status, but they are very weak. Additionally, there are some slugs that are green in the swamp too. They don't inflict poison though. There is an Everjail and the boss of that is Ancient Hero of Zamor. She uses a curved sword and is fond of ice. There's a dedicated Zamor ruin in the consecrated snowfield area in the late game where Zamor knights are the normal enemies. Anyways, her attacks mostly host the capability of dealing a lot of frost damage. The buildup of frost can be fast during her special attacks and after the start of second phase. Covers a long range so healing becomes a little tough so this boss can be quite difficult for the new players. A tough boss fight the game grants you pretty early in the game. By the way, did you know there's a peculiar dog in Whipping Peninsula? 
that has a shell which it goes inside of it if attacked. This is the first time I have seen a dog that looks or behaves like this. From Software does put unexpected things in the game to make it exceptional. Moving on to inside of catacombs and tunnels, the miners are sturdy and they have a pickaxe. They don't flinch if hit with a straight sword. The weapon somewhat bounces back where the great swords can make them flinch. Another variant of Miner has a bag on his shoulder with glowing rocks. First I was wondering if they would throw anything from the bag but unfortunately they don't. Skeletons can be found in catacombs and they have some different variants too. One is the regular one that has a buckler and a sword. Another one shoots arrows with his bow and the last variant throws unlimited bombs. Nevertheless, every skeleton can revive in a short period of time unless you hit them again after they die once. On the beach side and inside the catacombs these undeads can be found. I'm not sure if they are called undeads because calling them skeletons probably won't gonna make any sense. If they grabs you then you become their tasty treat for a small time. They can also be seen in the poison swamp of Whipping Peninsula. They are vulnerably slow and very easy to kill. Inside Morn Castle there is a pumpkin head. I think he uses a big maul. He smashes his head to deal damage to the player. The maul is long enough and he does delayed attacks with it. Muscular body and has a beard under his pumpkin that makes him a boomer and a bodybuilder at the same time. Some demi-humans are located at the north side of Whipping and one interesting fact about these demi-humans is at first they will be aggressive towards you but after two of them is down, the other two surrenders. Uses a small wooden shield and a sword as their primary arsenal. These creatures are very squishy and weak on their attacks. Demi-human Cheap is the bigger one and he has two knives. Bears a typical Dex player's characteristics and inflicts bleed status on you. Has some broken bones around his body and he is somewhat fast. For low level players he can be quite a punishment. Dragonflies are harmless for the most part but if they notice you swinging your armament at them, they'll attack you immediately. This wildlife creature is very squishy and easy to kill but they are like some annoying male mosquitoes that annoys you and female mosquitoes that bite when you show aggressive movements. I don't know if I'm making any sense. Let's talk about another wildlife animal which is the bear. Bears are aggressive, they attack with their claw, they also do a slam attack with two claws. Can be seen throughout the whole map, pretty easy to defeat even for the noobs. Crab is another enemy that's all over the lands between. In Whipping Peninsula, the numbers of crabs are not much but still they appeared in two places. They use their claw to grab and punish you, they use them to slam you pretty hard, they shoot white water straps out of their mouth, they are not so hard to kill but using a shield can really give you an advantage over them. In the Tombsward Catacombs there is a miniboss named Cemetery Shade, a shadowy creature that uses two cleavers with wombo combos and inflicts bleed damage can close its distance by phasing from one place to another in just a second. Rapid attacks that causes blood loss quite fast even if you block. Despite its offense being heavy, tearing down the health bar is not a hard task. Caden's Sellsword is an enemy that has a dismounter as his primary weapon. He is quite aggressive with it and does a roar too. In the ailing village of Whipping Peninsula, there are giant rats and small rats with glowing eyes. Their attacks have madness status build up. The enemies that uses a spear in this village with glowing eyes have an attack that the emits from their eyes is called the frenzied flame which also inflicts madness. This madness build up animation can be seen in action after the madness bar fills up. Inside catacombs some small imps can be seen who uses a small knife and inflicts bleed damage. They are pesky little creatures and they are pretty agile. Can hurt you quite a lot if you are not careful. Wolves in Elden Ring are seen in a pack. The half black ones are easier to kill than the white ones. Biting and headbutting is their way of attacking. White Wolf is quite buffed but overall a pretty weak enemy in general. Jellyfishes turns hostile and becomes red if you hit them. Then get ready for the tentacle slap right on your face. They also spill poison on you if you are at a distance. Even if you haven't noticed them, you at least probably have used the jellyfish spirit that works the same way as these jellyfishes. In this area, an alabaster lord appears and there are some miners too. The alabaster lord has a gravity bow that can pull you toward him followed by an attack. He can also lift your whole body with his sword. He is a tall humanoid creature with a lot of health and agility. A tough normal enemy for the new players. 
The miners in this area has some interesting attacks too. Pulling a rock from the ground and slamming you with a heavy attack and using a magic that brings spiked rocks from the bottom of the ground to damage you. There are just so many enemy variants even in the very early area. From Software has truly put in the effort to offer different experiences in every areas. This arrow golem in front of Castle Morn is a giant one. His arrows are quite big and takes more than 5 seconds to shoot you one. His aiming animation feels a little misleading at first glance as he moves his giant bow after pulling the arrow. When near his foot he can stomp you but his leg is the weakness and it's pretty easy to break their stance by constantly hitting the leg. In the Witchbane ruins, there are three variants of marionette soldiers. One uses spears, one with swords and one with arrows. They can be pretty aggressive if they go Rambo. With these hooligans, there is a rare enemy that's called School of Graven Mages. In the rare Lucaria Academy, you'll see these faces everywhere and this looks like a big boulder with all those faces attached to it. This enemy is basically a magic mortar, shoots blue rays in the air that falls on the player after a short period of time. They can do devastating damage if not evaded properly. Gatefront Ruins Godric Knight was nowhere to be seen until I was near the Tower of Return. This knight does not move on foot but is on a horse. His shield is behind him as he is on a mount and he attacks with a spear. The horse version is a challenging one for the new players but just like the Knight Rider, you can land a critical hit if the horse dies, making him fall on the ground and leave him vulnerable. I thought Land Octopus was not an enemy of Whipping Peninsula but I've stumbled upon it and it can be seen with some baby octopuses around it. The mother octopus moves its tentacle a lot to deal damage and it can also eat its own tentacle to heal itself when low which is a pretty nice detail from software has put. Its head is the weakest part, it's very much vulnerable to status effects, I had a bleed weapon and it was just too easy to inflict blood loss by hitting its head. The baby octopuses are pretty harmless though. There is one mausoleum in Whipping Peninsula and in front of every mausoleum there are some mausoleum soldiers. They can vanish and teleport to dodge, despite having some level up IQ, they don't have a head. They have brass shield equipped like regular guardic soldiers, pretty weak like them but with one exception of their vanishing and dodging. Malforming chanting dame can be found in various areas and there is one in Whipping Peninsula. Their job is to sing their peculiar lullaby. It stays with the bats and has more HP but killing it will grant you a fat golden rune. Inside the Impeller's tomb is this earth tree burial watchdog boss. It's a cat with three heads. All three heads can shoot fire at once. It has a superman cape and with its sword it does some dangerous attacks. Mostly delayed but rapid slashes and helicopter attacks and thrust attacks are a part of its movesets. Can be a challenging boss for the starters. Another challenging boss is the Earth Tree Avatar. There is only one of these boss in Whipping Peninsula, a reused asset of Asylum Demon from Dark Souls that does fat butt slam on the ground. His staff can cover a long range, one leg stomp, magic lasers and the butt slams are his most used movesets. Running is the best way to evade his lasers. This miniboss is tough for the beginners and getting used to its movesets can be quite challenging. Cautiousness is necessary to evade its attacks. The Earth Tree Avatar spawns quite a lot throughout the whole game with different variants, so if this is the first one you face, you should learn his movesets for the future encounters. That is all the enemies you encounter in Whipping Peninsula. Thank you very much for watching this long content. Leave a like so that this video goes into the algorithm and subscribe if you want more contents of Elden Ring. See you and I hope you have a nice day.